Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter, and our opening hymn is in the hymnal number 535. Please stand. Please turn, turn to our Easter acclamation in your bulletin. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This time we invite any children who would like to participate in the children's Liturgy of the Word to please join your leader. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. It's just the short version today. So. Uh, next we'll do Psalm 30. Uh, we'll sing the refrain twice, and then once after every four verses.
reading from the Revelation to John. I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Our gospel hymn is in the hymnal number 204. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. To you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was, I'm on the wrong year. (laughs) Excuse me. That is not what I prepared to preach on today. (laughs) Let's start that gospel reading over again. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. 
And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. But none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I am going fishing, we will go with you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Do you love me? Jesus asked Peter one, two, three times. Did Jesus have a hearing problem? Did he need a hearing aid? Was he playing some kind of game with Peter? Was he trying to settle the score with Peter for having denied knowing him three times? We can find answers to those kind of questions if we reflect on our experience of when we have been hurt or betrayed by someone we love and who loves us. So think of a friend that you trusted Think of the many times you shared with that person your hopes, your dreams, your very deep thoughts on life. Think how you expected that if anyone understood you, it was this person. You would stand up for each other no matter what. That is what was expected. But then this person hurt you or betrayed you. You felt resentful, vulnerable. You didn't know when you would recover. You wondered if this person still cared for you the way you cared for them. And you wondered if maybe you did something to bring this on you. So is it any wonder that Jesus asked Peter that question three times? Do you love me? He too needed to be reassured that he wouldn't be abandoned again. Do you think Jesus was satisfied with Peter's response? Hopefully, right? Are you satisfied when someone asks you for forgiveness? Hopefully, right? Is a relationship after betrayal ever the same? After all, being hurt again is a possibility. This resurrection of trust in our gospel story today is an amazing testimony that new and better life is always possible. We can reflect on Jesus' personal experience of trust and betrayal and then our own experience of trust and betrayal. We can pray that like Jesus and Peter, we will also experience a reborn trust 
in our relationships. We experience crosses just like Jesus experienced the cross. And we experience resurrections just like Jesus experienced the resurrection. And that resurrection is what can turn our lives around. It's through the resurrection, through the power of the Spirit that God gives life. Uh, the Spirit's presence makes us holy, or you could say whole again. Uh, we're not sinless, but through grace, we're being constantly reconnected with God, our neighbor, our true self, who we desire to be. And being what we're intended to be when we were first formed in the mind of God is all part of that growth in wholeness. We could use other words to describe it, like sanctification. Sanctification mends our separation, our fragmentation from God, from others in the community, and also within ourselves. Or you could just say, more simply, the presence of the Spirit makes us whole and complete again and again and again and again. This is the work of God's Spirit in our lives. And that's why we constantly invoke the Holy Spirit when we pray together. You may have noticed it, maybe you didn't, but God's Spirit is invoked constantly here. Mere water baptizes, making us children of God. Asking forgiveness and absolution heals and restores us as children of God. Bread and wine become a sign of divine life strengthening us as children of God. Oil in the sacrament of confirmation confirms the baptismal faith of the children of God. Oil also anoints and heals the sick children of God. Rings are exchanged between some children of God. And promises are made by some to serve the community in their role as children of God. God's spirit is constantly invoked. And whether we noticed it or not, we invoke God's Spirit in our prayer all the time. Why do we do this? What do we call it? We call it an epiclesis, calling down God's Spirit. You could say a transformation. Think about all those consecrations, those moments of sanctification. Who wouldn't want to receive as many of them as often as possible to help us each day? The Spirit rests upon everyone in the community in those ways and in many other different ways, too. And the Spirit resting on us is a sign of the coming of the kingdom, a sign of the fruitfulness of the good, good people, God's children. We don't need to be separated or fragmented from each other or from God or from ourselves. We can be holy. We can be whole. And the church has always understood the liturgy as nurturing the Spirit's presence of life within us. In order for everyone to be made whole, God starts here and now with this community at this moment and then extends that grace out into the world in other moments. Just like the food of the Eucharist, the Spirit is invoked on the community of faith so we can make known the resurrection. All these moments are called Epiclesis, consecration, sanctification, all those moments are where we, we are asked by Jesus, do you love me? And our response in faith, hope, and love is how we live out that invitation, follow me. Specifically, today the invitation is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And our response is amen, or yes, Lord, I do believe. Or as Peter said in the gospel today, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Or as he also said, Lord, you know everything, you know that I love you. So we have all been caught up in this net of God's love. And the net in our gospel, you know, wasn't the size of nets that people use today when they go fishing. Their nets were a lot smaller um, and handmade. And so when there's 153 fish, 183, I'm losing the number in my head right now. 
153. Thanks for your help again with the gospel today. Um, those were the known number of tribes of people in the world. It was a symbolic number. And so it's not about that number. It's just about God's message, God's love being made available now through Jesus' resurrection to all people for all time. And we are heirs of those same promises of the kingdom to this day. We have been entrusted with the message and with each other. So when Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, he said it to us too. When Jesus said to Peter, follow me, he said it to us too. The risen Jesus remains among us in these words of scripture as we remember them, as well as in sacrament, those holy moments we share together. The risen Jesus is here with us, listening to us, opening our minds to scripture, hosting us at the table, and sending us out to continue to hand on the message of resurrection. Each of us, we are called through baptism. We are filled with God's spirit. We must not only witness, but also bear witness. We must not only see, but also proclaim with our lips and lives. We must not only experience, but also let others know of our experience. We must go out and proclaim that Jesus is risen, because now we are the fishers. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God. Please join in the prayers of the people, Form 4. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name, especially our bishops, rector, vestry, and other ministers, may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land especially the elected leaders and armed forces of our nation and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those in our diocesan cycle of prayer, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, 
especially our church members and family and friends on the prayer list, and for the needs of Clark, Debbie, Jolie, and John, Peter, Xavier, Megan, Jeffrey, Jeannie, and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially our church members and family and friends on the prayer list. And for Sherry Schmidt, Harry Finkenstadt, Stevie Graves, Mary Marlowe, and that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with St. Paul and all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. A, let's pray this prayer by Miriam Therese Winter of the Medical Mission Sisters. I love you, O oh God, my love, my warmth, my solace, my fulfillment. All that I am, all that I do finds meaning and purpose in you. Fill me with the full force of your love and its passionate splendor so that I might hold and heal all those who are crying out for love. Love through me all the unreconciled whose homes and hearts are broken and let them know I am able to love because you loved me first. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Good morning. I do have some announcements today. So please take home your bulletin. There's lots of announcements and information available in it. Um, please keep in mind the Haymarket Food Pantry bringing donations. We have teams who deliver the donations to the food pantry. Um, if you are interested in helping St. Paul's takes on um, the produce delivery from the Fauquier Education Farm to the Haymarket Food Pantry from June through October. Um, sometimes the crop goes into November and even December, depending on how good the crop is for the farmer. Um, but we have teams who pick up crates at the food pantry around 10 a.m. on Monday mornings. They drive to Fauquier Education Farm outside Warrington. They help the farmer load the, the produce out of their bins into our bins, into their car, and they take the 
bins back to the food pantry, and there are volunteers there that help you to unload them for the clients of the food pantry. It's a great way to help feed people. It's a simple thing to do, but really important. So if you're interested, I'm gathering names of people to form teams, um, and we'll put a schedule together for the summer. Please email me or call me. Let me know you're interested. Um, our Shrymont weekend is coming up June 3rd through 5th, and Sandy Hawk is going to make an announcement about it. Sandy, you want to come up to the microphone? I don't like this. Um, I came for two years not really knowing what Shrine Mont was, and I would hear talk about people going to Shrine Mont, they're doing Shrine Mont, and it was like, okay. And I'm here by myself usually. My husband shows up occasionally, but um, I just didn't know what it was. And after two years, I thought, I saw a flyer that was over in the rectory, and I thought, took it home to my husband, and I put it on the counter, and he goes, well, what's this? And I told him, and he said, well, do you want to go? And I went, would you go? And he goes, yeah, sure. So we went. It was the most wonderful experience. And I, it was so totally different than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, okay, you're going to go and you're going to be in these groups and you're going to be having religious ceremony here and you're going to have this here and you're going to have that there. <laughs> That's not what it is. <laughs> that is not what it is. You get there on Friday afternoon. We stay in these houses, which the houses are literally bedrooms and bathrooms is all this kind of primitive, but it's great. You know, you sleep in twin beds. It's no problem, and you've got your bathroom, and that's it. Sean sets up canopies outside, and the kids go run wherever they might go run. The to the pond, mainly. The salamanders, the salamanders and, um, you know, they take care of doing all that, and the adults We'll be imbibing on a few little alcoholic beverages from time to time, and um, then um, have dinner Friday night. There's a big social with ice cream and everything, and then everybody comes back, and the kids again are who knows where. Nobody worries about them, and the adults are all sitting out there, and Eowyn's going, yes, yes. Meals are absolutely phenomenal. Saturday, you get up Saturday morning, you go have the great breakfast, and then... You're really on your own to do whatever you might want to do. There's um, walk, hike up to the mountain and um, to the cross, and it's absolutely beautiful. It does take a little bit, but it's beautiful. There's another walk that several of us have done down to Lake Laura, and um, it's just a it's a phenomenal weekend, and it's just a lot of socializing. There's people that take country rides around and do. There's a couple of wineries not too far from there. Um, Saturday night, there's um, after dinner, they do um, a big bonfire with s'mores, and um, the kid, people are, some of our guitar players are playing and singing and doing, and Sunday morning is wonderful. And I remember the first year we went on Sunday morning, we're packing things up, and Terry looks over and she said to Ron and I, she goes, Well, will you come back? And Ron's going, Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be back. So I just want to tell you, I thought it was just for the younger people with the kids and all that, and I found out that's not what it is, and everybody is totally welcome. And when I came back to St. Paul's after that, I had always felt like I was a parishioner sitting in the pew, came on Sunday, that's what I was. When I came back from Shrinemont after the first time, I felt like I was part of the St. Paul's family. And it was just a big thing for me of being part of St. Paul's. And don't feel like somebody's got to reach out to you and say, oh, why don't y'all come? Why don't y'all come? Because, you know, there will, everybody's coming. Um, if you'll just kind of show, show a hands, those of you that do go, so if anybody that does want to ask, you can see how many people here do go and have gone. And so look around, and if you're questioned about something, ask. Um, you can go online. It's real easy on the weekly thing and sign up. Or do you have something in the rectory? Email me. Or email Sean, whatever. It's, it's cheap. It's, I think, what is it, $166 for? 14 and over. For 14 and over. And that's all your meals, all your everything. And it's a great weekend. Totally more than well worth that. So, Wait, bye. right here. Thank you, Sandy. Come back, come back, come back. See, this was my opportunity. <laughs> So um, Sandy also has been on the vestry, and she's been snowbirding for a little while. So um, she just wasn't here that one Sunday when we had thank yous to all the vestry members who were stepping off for the past 
three years on the vestry, so I uh, just a little gift, uh, a thank you um, for all those vestry members. And so just a little thank you, Sandy, for your time on the vestry. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> wonderful opportunity to always do it for three years. I am his member, so I'm not here all the time, but he can always take care of it. So just thank Thanks, you. Sandy. All right. So Shrymont is a wonderful experience. We do a whole lot of nothing together. It's great. You could go for um, a day trip, a half weekend, a full weekend. There's an info flyer in the weekly email and a sign up in the weekly email, or you can email me. Please sign up by May 15th so we can work on room assignments with the staff at Shrymont before we go June 3rd through 5th. And if this year doesn't work out, it's always the weekend after Memorial Day weekend. We have bishop visitation this coming Sunday, May 8th. Uh, we will have the 8.30 service. Um, in case you happen to be coming to the 8.30, the sermon will be very short um, because the bishop's showing up at 9. And so the bishop shows up at 9, to sign the certificates and, and talk to me. And then at 9.30, um, all the candidates, we have eight confirmation candidates from St. Paul's, 13 reception candidates, um, more like the kids for confirmation, the adults for reception. Um, they will all meet with the bishop in the front parlor of the rectory. We also have three teens from Leeds Parish and Markham who will be joining us as well. They're all sisters. Um, but it's really a great celebration. At 10.30, we'll have the bishop here. You get to see a bishop in action. We haven't had a bishop here since 2018 because things got shut down in 2020. Uh, and during that service, we'll celebrate Eucharist, confirmation, reception. It's Mother's Day, so we'll have blessings for moms, grandmothers, godmothers. And at this time, during the announcements, we'll sing a hymn. And during the hymn, uh, first couple verses, the acolytes, the vestry, the bishop and I will walk out the side door behind the church where the columbarium is. We've been waiting to do this since before the shutdown. And then we'll pause the song. The bishop will turn on his microphone and he'll say the prayer of blessing for the new columbarium. And then he'll turn off the microphone and we'll sing the rest of the hymn while everyone walks back in and we'll proceed with our service. So it'll be a really nice service. Um, afterwards, we'll have a great fellowship meal. You get to meet a bishop, talk to a bishop, talk to each other. The main courses are from Giuseppe's, Giuseppe's um, chicken francese, lasagna bolognese, ravioli with cheese, and gnocchi. And then we invite all of you to bring a side dish or dessert to share. Um, so it's be a big weekend. Um, and then on May 22nd, that'll be Pat's um, last Sunday here with us. And so we'll have a farewell celebration for her and a big meal after that too. So um, let's see. I, I don't know, maybe. And maybe, maybe we'll convince Daniel to be here, too. Okay. Um, so I just thought I'd mention about the bees, something exciting about the bees. You know, I contacted a local apiary who has been reclaiming the bees to take to their property to use to um, um, harvest, you know, at, at um, orchards in the area. Normally, they recover about 8,000 bees. They're already up to 30,000 bees. So, and the reason why, apparently, is we have lots of queen bees not just one. And so each queen bee gets sort of drawn into the little box that's on the outside of the tree. There's two trees behind the church with the boxes. And then the bees collect around the queen bee and they start forming the honeycomb. They've already collected a couple dozen pounds of honey already um, and 30,000 bees. So they're just gonna keep putting the boxes up. They think there's more queens in the trees. So as the queens come out into the boxes, the bees join them and they'll take them away. So this could be a long process. We're producing lots of bees at St. Paul. Um, so this is a good thing. We're happy to save the bees and, and have apiaries who can use them and, and everyone benefits, not just here at St. Paul's, um, but lots of people are going to benefit from these bees. It's great. Um, keep in mind, there's always updates on our website and the weekly email comes out on Thursdays. Uh, today, uh, we have, it's the first Sunday of May, so we have blessings for anyone celebrating their birthday during May. If you're celebrating your birthday, please stand up. All right, so Kathy's up here in the front. All right, we got some May birthdays. Got a handful of birthdays. Great. 
Oh, and the twins. The twins aren't standing. Are they standing? They're standing. Okay, there they are. Okay. Cool. As you celebrate your birthday this month, may there be peace within you. May you trust God that you were exactly where you were meant to be in life. May you remember the infinite possibilities that are born of faith each day. May you use the gift you have received, passing on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing you are a child of God, giving, letting God's spirit settle into your soul, giving you the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love each day. And we ask this birthday blessing for each of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Is anyone celebrating their wedding anniversary during May? Please stand up. Ooh. Ooh, wow. can, I, can I ask how many years are you celebrating? 41, 32, and Amy's recovering from a little surgery. 13, 53, 42, 8, yeah, I remember that day. Okay, well, let's say a prayer blessing for all of you who celebrate your wedding anniversary this month. May our marriage continue to enrich your lives. May you work together to build a relationship of substance and quality. May the honesty of your communication build a foundation of understanding, connection, and trust. May you respect each other's individual personality and philosophy, giving each other room to grow and fulfill your dreams. May your sense of humor and playful spirit continue to enliven your relationship. And may you understand that neither of you is perfect. You are both subject to human frailties. And may your love strengthen when you fall short of each other's expectations. May you be best friends, better together than either of you are apart. And we ask this blessing for each of you as you celebrate your anniversary this month. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy anniversary. And lastly, today, as we take up the offertory, it is time for the noisy pull tab collection. You will know what to do. The offertory hymn is in the Lift Every Voice and Sing hymnal, number 138.
Our prayer continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. other in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be known to us, Lord Jesus. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our first communion hymn is sung by the adult choir.
please stand for our closing prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please join us for fellowship on our service. I understand to celebrate Henry and Charlie's birthday this week. There are cupcakes for the kids at Fellowship. Our closing hymn is in the hymnal, number 460, the first three verses. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.